Hey, it's Justin with Seaboard Marine. In this video, we're back on the Sea Harvester. We're gonna take a look at the hydraulic system and we're gonna drop in the engine for the final time. So here's the finished deck. In the last video, it wasn't quite uh, cleaned up. Just needs the nod skid and it's ready to go. We're gonna take a look at the hydraulics. We made a few changes to the hydraulics. The uh, Most of the deck gear was already here and a lot of the plumbing was already in place, but we did add a anchor winch and we also added um, some manifolds for the pressure and return and we modified the tank. We just kind of cleaned things up a little bit. Whoever installed the gear on the deck originally did a pretty good job. There's quite a bit here. You can see we got the uh, salmon girdies. We got two on each side with controls. Two over on that side. Uh, we've got a rope puller here and we've got uh, a pinch puller for long lining you can see some of the plumbing down here also we have a bait chopper little rotary mill here don't want to stick your hand down in there and we've got um, the trap pinch puller on a boom and here's the controls there so that's a pretty nice setup so most of this was here and it's a really well set up boat a lot of the gear and equipment on this boat um, makes it really nice to fish with and it, it's really set up to a lot of different things, which is great, but it also added a lot of weight and that's part of why the outdrive wasn't able to keep up and, and push such a heavy boat and get it up onto step. So that's why we had to switch to a V-drive and add some length to carry all this gear more efficiently. So the boat came to us with some issues with the outdrive system and some of the hydraulics. So what we did was I kind of redesigned some of the hydraulic um, components on this thing to work better with the existing pump that the customer had. So what we have here is a pressure manifold and a return manifold. So off of this side of the pressure manifold is where our pressure connection from our pump is going to connect. So you just have it capped right now? We just have it capped right now because the pump is off of the engine. And it'll pressurize this whole... It whole pressurizes this whole manifold across here. So he didn't have these manifolds before? No, he did not. Okay. And then this is our return manifold. So all of our return lines that were existing and some new ones in the boat come to this manifold through this hose and through this hose. And what we do is we regulate the amount of volume coming through this hose to push more volume through this hose, through our heat exchanger, and back to tank. So in order, in, by utilizing these two hoses, this one, that one? Oh, right that's here. on the other end of the... That's on the other end of the manifold. Yeah, okay. With a valve on it. I see that. Okay. So by closing this valve, it restricts the flow out of the manifold in this port and increases the flow out of the manifold into this port and increases our hydraulic volume through our heat exchanger and back to tank. Okay. If the, this system is running too cold, we open this valve up, which allows more flow through this hose and back to tank and less, ho less oil through this hose. Oh, I see. It's just cooler. So this is just a pass through. Mm -hmm. Oh, so those are kind of equalized in a way, right? Correct. Yeah. But we can put resistance on this one to increase flow through this one. Right. So, so you can't stop. You can't uh, necessarily can't, stop can't, flow through this. Cannot, no. Except for the the you can the resistance of this is going to slow this down somewhat. If if that's fully open, that's correct. This hose is larger. Right. And this will have some resistance. So a lot. So a little more fluid would flow through the T and straight out. Right. But then you choke. You start choking off that that, and it forces more through the cooler. And back in and then out back right. to the tank. Okay. So the path of least resistance is through the larger hose. Right. And that's by design. Right. So this is our water inlet through our from our engine. Water outlet goes up here, discharges onto the deck so the customer can see the water coming out of the heat exchanger. Oh, okay. These are flow controls valves. These valves set the speed of two different motors on the boat. Okay. This valve controls the speed of this directional control valve. Okay. This directional control valve controls neutral, forward and reverse on his water pump. Okay. 
what that enables him to do is to draw water out of the ocean, out of the discharge port of the water pump, through the deck to a deck hose. Yeah. Or if he wanted to use this pump as an emergency build pump, he could take that deck hose, put it in the engine com compartment. And reverse it? And reverse it through this electrical <laughs> control valve. Wow, that's cool. And that sucks the water out of the engine, back through the through hole, and back into the ocean. So you could have a you could have a pretty good size hole in your boat and still stay afloat. Right. <laughs> or he can connect that hose to his fish hold and pump his fish hold out. Okay. So it's a kind of a kind of a neat system. So you can you can use it as a as a water vacuum or as a right or so, as a, a as a deck hose. And nice. it's a pretty good sized volume of water that's going to come out of there. This other flow control here, which you can see kind of barely here. That flow control controls the speed of his salmon girdies. So the salmon girdie, the salmon fishing, is a very slow kind of, you don't need a lot of volume of oil to do that fishery. So by setting this, we don't overspeed the girdies. So, and these two are adjustable. He can adjust them to whatever he wants. If he wants more water flow out of this at idle, he can open this up. If he wants, you know, less, he can close it down. If he wants more to his girdies, he can open this up. Awesome. All right, these, all these little blue lines you see are all signal lines. Some of the existing black ones came with the boat. Seem, these are some of the new ones. This is a little bleed valve that we're gonna use. What do you mean by signal lines? Signal lines, basically this connection that you see is open right here. That connection is gonna go to the pump. So the pump's gonna have a signal line, a pressure line, a case strain line, and then the suction line is right here. So there will be four connections at the pump once we get the pump installed into the boat. You had to do a little custom work to this to this um, tank here? The tank was positioned right there. It was right in the front? Right. It was right against that wall. So what we did was we made some modifications to the tank. What do you want in here, Frank? This is going to be the, uh, uh, the fill for the hydraulic tank for the Sea Harvester. Okay. This is the inlet and there's all kinds of other things that we need to... Yeah, all this stuff was already there mostly? Yeah. Sure, well, this one, what are you doing here? I see something here gonna, too. That used to be the old fill, we're going to plug it up. Oh, you're going to just plug it? Yes, right here. Got it. You're just going to just plop this over the top and, and yeah. weld around it? Yeah. Sweet. And the filter there is on the return line there? Yeah, this is filtering the return the return oil. Okay. Yeah, a lot going on with this. like we're installing the uh, hydraulic pump on the front of the engine. The bracketry was here. It had to be modified. This is new. The Lovejoy is new. Oh, it's a new Lovejoy? Yes. The Both one, sides? The other one was a clutch. Oh, it was a clutch. It's oh, clutch. that's right. That's right. So you had to modify the brackets to remove the clutch, correct? It used to be longer? This bracket used to come out to All the way out to there. there. Same, same pump? Same pump. So we just took out the intermediate Logan oil clutch. And what, what was the reason we took that out? Because it's not necessary. Because <laughs> it's the first. Isn't this a, uh, is this a pressure compensated? It's a pressure cell. compensated smart pump. So you know, so you don't need a clutch. You know, why, why would you put a clutch on it? Yeah. <laughs> is there a flat blade screw? No offense to the guy who built the boat. Uh, yeah. yeah, we modified the one that was driving the clutch. Okay. So we actually machined it down and keyed it. For the Lovejoy? For the Lovejoy. The hard thing about this whole setup is that it's got to be it's, it's in between the mounting brackets and the engine. So in order to align it, you got to take the weight off so that you can move everything, get it in alignment, set it, and then set the engine. We would not have done it that way. No. 
But we're just working with what the customer has. That's right.